let's begin the show. again guys to yet another episode i am your host rin we are going to try a new segment out today called rin reviews and rin reviews is going to be like i said earlier a review show we're going to review what a game is we're going to look at how it is how it feels how i think about it what my views on it are good and bad and then we'll have a discussion about it with whoever's here um today we are looking at Planet Side 2. They just released their full version as of Tuesday. I've been playing in the beta, so I know a little bit about it already. And I, everything got wiped, so everyone's new, everyone's getting their same stuff set up. We'll go over the model and everything. Um, I plan on going over business models with games that need it. Some games don't need it, like, like Hell Yeah and stuff like that. But things that are MMOs and have a free-to-play model or a monthly fee, we'll go over, we'll see how it is, and I'll let you know how I feel about that. Because in some it's good and some it's bad. Today, we're going to go ahead, and, and I was going to go through the uh, the Helio server on Nistel, but it's kind of down at the moment, as you can see. So we'll go on my main dude, Epic Fable. Uh, like I said, I, I haven't played much since it came out. I didn't have time yesterday, and I'm doing it today, as of today. And it, so, I don't have much. I, I upgraded my sniper rifle, but that's it. Um, while it's loading, we'll go over a couple things. The price. It's free. Congratulations. Go get it. It's on Steam. It's free. I mean, what can you not love about that? It is a first-person shooter, massive and I mean the word massive continental bout for supremacy and it's just amazing like I really really like the concept and they seem to kind of got it like there's some problems with it that I'll go over that I think could use tweaking and can always be brought in later but for right now it's, it's pretty solid uh, basically you have the three factions the Terran the um, new conglomerate and let me blow up the thing because I can't remember the third guys. They're the purple guys. It's blue, purple, and red. Which, you know, standard. And it takes a second whenever you load up for some reason. Jesus Christ, it's taking a second. One second, guys. I may have to lower the quality, but I didn't have to whenever it was in beta. Okay. Yeah, it's just loading in for the first time. Sometimes it takes a second. So let me see if I can pull up the map and get the third race. Well, I don't need a map tutorial. I can figure that out. Um, so yeah, there's new con new conglomerate Terran, and what's the third guys? I can never remember their name. I was hoping it was like say this is air yeah, this is controlled by someone. All right, I apologize. I cannot remember the third people for the life of me. So that's my fault. We'll try and figure out at the end of the episode. I'll I'll create a new character and and it'll tell me. So that's that's what we're gonna do for now. Um, let's go over everything. Um, starting with just a basic. This is your profile. You go up battle ranks. As far as I've seen, nothing really changes other than your title and maybe a couple of um, credits now. Or not credits, but um, certs now and then. And certificates are what the basis of your um, leveling up and buying weapons and buying armor and stuff like that. Armor in this game is more cosmetic. The, the real things that boost you are um, the add-ons for guns and the guns themselves. And that can all be bought, and I'll go over that in a second. Right now, you can see my profile page. It says I have one kill, two deaths. My kill-death ratio is 0.5. Not very good, 
But like I said, I only started. Uh, my score is 110. I have a I've I've earned 101 certificates, um, uh, certifications. You start off with 100, so I've only earned one. Um, stats. It'll show you what you've done, what your kill averages, leaderboards, what boost you have, and what you want to use. Um, it shows your, your resources. Resources down here at the bottom, um, like it says, arrow is for air vehicles, mech is for ground vehicles, and infantry is the items, the consumables you have, like, <coughs> like, um, as far as boosts and grenades and stuff like that nature. And you gain those by controlling different areas, and I'll show you again the map in a second. If we're going to go through this one step at a time, you become a premium member. That's basic for most free-to-play models. You have a, a, a sort of structure where everything's free, but you can go up to this premium status where you get advanced stuff faster or, or, and reduce prices and some stuff. Um, premium members, I'll bring it up right quick. This is their business model. Um, it has a progressive kind of thing and I like this it's like you it says you see how it says 25 to, to 50 percent on everything it's because you start out in 25 percent and as the months go on of you consecutively being there um, it it increases so you go from 25 to 50 so it's the first month you get 25 next month it, and it goes up by five percent so 30 then 35 then 40 then 45 then 50 which is cool that that, that encourages a longer stay in the game and, 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 and more money being brought in, which is always good for titles that you like. Uh, let's face it, you, you, you don't want titles that you like to fail, so the more people that do it and the more people that do it consistently get bigger benefits. And it does reset if you, if you miss a month, which is unfortunate, but I'm sure if something happens, like it's a, a miscommunication or a, a card issue, they'll fix it. But if you're just like off for a couple months, they'll probably just you'll they'll be wiped clean, and there's nothing you can do. But it, it starts out like most of them, most fifteen dollars a month, or you can go up to a year, and it's nine or ten dollars a month. It goes progressively lower the more you commit, which is good. Um, like it says, it, you get more cert points, you get more resources, you get more experience, and you get five hundred station cash every month. That's good. Station cash allows you to buy um, weaponry. So, so, since we're talking a lot about money, let's go to the market. The market. This is where you buy guns, buy upgrades for vehicles, buy camo for you, buy, buy cosmetic stuff for your person. And I don't have problems with, with buying weaponry and boosts and stuff like that, because all of it's kind of, you know, fair. Like... Different weapons do different things. I don't feel like they're very overpowered. I could be wrong. I haven't gotten too many yet, so I can't tell you for certain if one is more overpowered than the other. But from what I've seen in the beta, there's nothing been really overpowered. It's more situational. Um, it may progress in that, and if it does, that's very bad marks. You don't ever want a game where you have to pay. But the good thing is... Even the stuff that is a little bit higher damage and everything is still buyable. It's all buyable through certs. I haven't seen one item in this game that is not buyable through certs other than cosmetic. And cosmetic is fine. I don't want to be able to buy cosmetics. That's something that the developer needs, especially in FP, or a free-to-play, to gain money. So I don't mind those not being able to be earned other than you buying station cash and you getting it. That's it. That's fine. But weaponry and stuff of that nature needs to be able to be bought both ways. Now, upon saying that, there there is a good bad scenario with weapons. Weapons all have their standard weapons. They're just they show you their fire weight, their damage, their whatever. You can try every gun you want within six hours of each other for 30 minutes. So I tried a gun to make sure I was buying the right one. It gave me a 30 minute trial, but I cannot have another trial for another six hours. Really good. Make sure you get what you want, make sure it works the way you want to, and make sure the purchase is final. But every gun in this game can be customized, and I'll show you that right quick. 
See, you pick which one you want, and then you go, um, where is it at? I guess I need to go to a supply station. Sorry, one second. You can go and, and edit it, and that's really cool. Like, I am all for that. I am all for editing items and, and having it, like, the, the way you want. Uh, I guess it won't let me unless I just have an item to, to edit it with. But regardless, it brings up a menu. You can choose your site. And I'll show you that because I can show you that within the menu of what you can buy with certs. You can you can buy different things for it. This is what I'm using, the gas suppressor. So you can buy a suppressor so less noise, so you're, you're spotted less easily. <coughs> the way fire works in this game is your name will appear as if you're in a certain area of vision. Some people can update their vision and, and, and see people further away. Not a lot, not ridiculous, but, you know, a fair amount. Um... But if you're a sniper, people can't see you. They can see your body, but they won't be able to see your name. The way that works is it draws more attention to you the more sound you're making. So if you don't have a suppressor and you have a, a, a sniper rifle that, that has a loud fire, your name will appear for a second or two, and then it'll fade. So the suppressor is a really good thing to have so that you can be um, a little bit quieter. And then it's got optics, you know, different type of zooms. Some people like to zoom on the go so they don't want those really in-depth zooms like like 12 times so they can see the fucking hairs on people like 20 miles away. Some people do. They want to be 20 miles away and be able to snipe people from just way across the world and never have to worry about it. And that's good. And then I've got some stuff like a forward grip and a flashlight, which is nothing game-changing about the gun, but some guns do have game-changers on the rail like grenade launchers and stuff like that. So it does add... A little bit extra to it so but these the only way you can buy attachments for a weapon is certifications that's really good in the sense that the only way you can customize weapon is if you play the game so you can buy them all day with all the money you ever want but if there's a secondary option or you want to to specifically um, tinker with it you cannot do it unless you have certs Inserts are only attainable through attaining goals, leveling up, and playing the game. So there is no other way to get it other than that. I, I kind of like that. I, I didn't know about that, so I wasted my money on a gun, or certs on a gun. When I have, you can see, I have some money. I could have just bought it with money. And I would have used the certs for um, just to upgrade it. But I didn't know, so I didn't have it, because I would have bought a suppressor for it. Which is my bad. I should have actually looked into it. But... For people that aren't told this, and, I, and like I said, I played for a while, and I was almost certain that I could buy it with station cash. It might be something they changed at the last moment. But since I didn't know, I lost out those certifications that I can never get back unless I just go play. So it's a good. It, like I said, it's a good and bad thing. They need to. I think they need to explain it more that way that you don't miss buy something. And then they have the weekly bundles and daily sales and just normal stuff that any free-to-play model will ever have. Everything's really good. Weapons and stuff aren't 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 bad. I don't think they're really overpowered. And it can all, like I said, everything is obtainable. Everything is obtainable through certifications. You can just buy it faster through, you know, money, which is normal for any free-to-play, and I think it's fine. And like I said, the the cosmetics you can see it all costs station cash, and that's fine by me. Like I said. As long as it's just cosmetic, let them make their money off of it. You gotta, they gotta make their money somehow. They're not letting you. They're letting you play your, your game for free. I mean, what more do you want? I mean, they're not locking anything out other than a cosmetic from you. That to me is amazing. Fine by me. So that's that's the um. That is, the shop as it is now. You can buy vehicle gear, vehicle weapons, vehicle. Our infantry gear, infantry weapons, the gear, like I said, everything gear-wise is just cosmetics. So, like, you can buy armor down here at the bottom and decals for your stuff, but it's all cosmetic. It doesn't increase stamina or the HP or the shield. It doesn't do anything. Everything that is game-changing is only to be bought by um, a cert or station cash combo. Or certs by itself. Some stuff can't even be bought by money. Like um, 
there actually is, and we'll go ahead since we're pretty much done with that anyway. There, I'll tell you this right quick. There's boost that you can buy, which is normal for any game, and it's difference, and it only can be bought by Station Cast too. <coughs> the other thing that is really, really good about this game is that this stuff right here is a physical upgrade to the character selection you have, and you can switch between any number of the five characters, which are infiltrate, heavy. Assault, Max, and, uh, sorry, 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 yeah, Max, Medic, and Engineer. And they all have different roles, and they all do different things. But, in each of them, they have certifications that boost those things they do. So, you can buy those with certification, but that's the only thing you can do. You cannot buy it with Station Cash whatsoever. So, if I wanted to buy this... It has to be bought with certification. It doesn't give me an option at all to buy it with Station Guard, which I think is amazing. That means that statistical upgrade has to be earned. You can't go buy it. You can't sit on the couch for five hours and just magically farm it. It has to be earned. You have to go out. You have to go obtain objectives. You have to complete things. You have to level up, and that's the only way you can statistically upgrade your person. So, you, like I said, there's utility slot... Uh, passive systems, it's all stuff for what this class does, like the class that I play a lot of at the moment is Infiltrator, which goes through, it can hack terminals and turn them to your team side so that you can have like reloading weapons in the middle of a person's base or a spawning tank, spawning aircraft, stuff of that nature to where it's you doing it, but you have to physically go up and hack the terminal and they can always take it back um, grenades, every class has grenades, I don't think they've changed between classes, it's just grenades. You have to go buy the grenades, though. You, once you spend the two that you start out with, you have to buy the rest. You have to completely restock every time, and it's not an automatic thing. As far as ammo for every class, every class has a set amount of ammo, depending on gun, depending on loadout, depending on everything. Um, as far as everything else goes... You just go to a terminal like I am at right now, and you click it, you can change your class, and then you resupply. So you resupply, it refills you. That's what a good thing about Infiltrator is. He can go in, hack this terminal that I'm at, have this in the middle of the enemy base, and they can be reloading. Because unless you have a suppressor, which is a type of vehicle with a certain loadout, or this done, you can't just magically gain ammo in the middle of the field. There's no ordinance you can call in. There's no money that you can spend to get ammo. You have to do it in this order. So it makes the classes very unique, and they, they all need each other. Like, Light Assault is very swift. They can, um, their big thing is not to be um, stationary for long. They have the melee. They can always kill people with melee if they need to. They have the regular guns. Most of them like to go with a shotgun. I kind of like that um, myself. Shotgun is secondary weapon. It's more mobile. You just blast people face, keep moving. Their big thing is that they have a jetpack. Jetpack is very mobile, very, you know, keep going, get to a top of a spot, snipe some people off. Even though you're not a sniper, assault rifle, like, close-range sniping is pretty good when they don't know that you're on the fucking top of their spawn roof. <coughs> so it's a good thing. The combat medic. The bane of most FPS... <laughs> It's actually pretty good. They 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 can do damage. They have um, it's basically that's all they do is just heal and and go in and set up med kits and stuff. To, or set up med stations. Pretty much, they just have a team surround them while they med people up and get everything one thing done. But they gain a constant amount of experience. So if you're in a huge battle, medics aren't bad. You you go in as a medic, gain a lot of experience, gain a lot of creds. And then you can put it wherever you want to. Like, credits are, or certifications are not stationary per whatever class you're in. It is the same for every class, anytime. So if you earn 50 on one class, you can spend it on the other class. You won't ever have to worry about it. So it's good to maybe flip back and forth. Uh, engineer, basically what it sounds, he makes a turret. He, he repla repairs vehicles, which is really good in the middle of a fight, which... Most people like to run engineer su uh, suppressor vehicles. Suppressor vehicles, normally they just they can tote people around, but if you get a specific upgrade for it, not only can they tote people around, they can be a spawn point, and they can re 
supply everyone that comes in. So an engineer sitting there using the turret and going out and repairing the suppressor and, and keeping it, not only do they get credits and experience for people that spawn in, which is really good in the middle of assault. You can gain a lot by just popping one down and, and have everyone spawn to your suppressor. But it's a good combo. You can you can fin people off, and then you can repair, and then you get back in, fin people off, and repair. And it feels like you're, you're there's not many people worrying about your suppressor anymore. You can change your class and go in. Um, heavy assault is good against... It's kind of a mobile vehicle destroyer. Normally, vehicles are really hard to kill. They're really hard to kill for any class other than a heavy because, or a max because you just don't have the firepower. It'd be like in real life. You, you wouldn't take an infantryman against a tank. It just wouldn't work out too well. This, they provide it with rocket launchers and stuff like that so that it can um, take down vehicles. And they can specialize in either land or, or air vehicles depending on what upgrades they get, but they can still always take out vehicles. They're not very mobile. They, they can take a lot of damage because they have a defense matrix that they throw up, but it, that's, their, that's their role, just kind of defensive and, and to take out vehicles. Max, they're just like the badass. They just go around shooting shit up. They can kill really easy. They do have a good melee attack. They can do good against um, vehicles. They're really slow, though really slow and the only way you can get these is at a station that you own and you have to buy it you see like that one says i gotta pay a hundred infantry credits to get them so that's the only way i can get that guy is if i pay and i'm at a i know it does man it looks pretty fucking badass and that's the only way you can get them is if you're at a station that you own so you it, it kind of it's not just like you could just drop one in and be badass all the time you have to you have to strategically use it and it can be used through um a, a Sunderer too. So the thing about each class is you can be any class at any time if you're dropping in from a death, you're spawning on a Sunderer and you can just switch in the Sunderer or that your spawn location because and at a terminal like this because you can't just do it on the fly. You have to restock, resupply, or re-put stuff on. They didn't want people to. They wanted people to be able to switch between as many classes as they want. But they didn't want them to do it within a split second because that's a little overpowered. So you have to find a station of some kind, whether it be a suppressor, whether it be a station in your base or hacked one, or sometimes whenever you're flying in, you can do it depending on how you do it. Um, and that's the classes. You've got six classes in all. They all have their own theme to them. They all have their own way of dealing with things, and they're really good. Like, they are. Like... I haven't been able to find a class that just hasn't excelled at what they do so much that it's necessary to have them. You need medics. You need engineers. You need infiltrators. You need light assault. And you need the heavies. And you need the maxes. You need it. Maxes, in my opinion, are the least used just because they cost so much. And their real use is um, stationary battles, like where... The enemy is coming in, they don't have to move too far, and they take care of business. They can, you are right, right at a control point to where you can spawn it in, and you don't have to go far for the fight, because they are really, really slow. Alright, so that's the that for the moment. Let's go outside and look at some of the vehicles and some of the um, aircraft you can control. And this is all stuff you can control, level 1, day you get in, as soon as you log on. It costs money, not real life money. It costs money though, so you have to be sparing with it. You don't have everything with it, you can upgrade it, but you can use it as soon as you get in game. So let's look. These are all the ground vehicles you can start out with a flash, ATV, zip line to one place, doesn't carry anything. I think you can get a mounted gun for it at one point. Nothing really spectacular about it. It's just, you get there, need to get there fast, spawn a flash. And as you see, every one of them costs money. A Sunderer. These are the things I was talking about. They have two mounted cannons. They can fit up to, I think, 16 players. <coughs> and they're really good. They're really, really, really good once you get the, um, the certification to be able to deploy them. And deploying them means that it's a basically a, a mobile spawn point. Um, it sets it up. You can't move it after you after you deploy it, but you can undeploy, redeploy as many times as you like. 
Um, like I said, really good combo with an engineer, Sunderer. He drives it up there, he gets out, he heals it, he mounts up a gun, and then, you know, takes care of business. Until you've until your team has progressed far enough to where he either needs to move up or needs to join into the fight to finish capping. A lightning. It's a fast tank. It doesn't have a lot of damage. It only carries one person. It's it's a good fast assault. A vanguard has two people. It's very slow. It's it's very very strong though. It has the mounted gun on top of it, so it can take care of air coming in. But it also has the heavy artillery. All right, so that's that is the ground. And here's this. Here, there's not much for planes, but they're still planes nonetheless. There's a one-man fighter plane. You go in, you do some damage, you take care of some of the, the drops coming in, you get out. That's basically all it is. It can get you pretty fast between one or two locations. There's faster ways, but it can do it. Um, and then there's Liberator. Fits up to, I think, 32 people at a time. It has three cannons so that you can have people in it at all times defending it. It is fairly slow. Its main purpose is big drops. You get people in it, you get them in there, you drop them down, you get out. Uh, usually you're escorted by a couple of reavers. Um, nothing big strategic-wise has been happening with this yet. It's still starting out. Most people don't know exactly what to do with everything yet, but... It's going to be, I think, a big play later to have a Liberator. Like, people still use it, but I don't think to the, the fullest potential. Dropping in and just being able just, uh, to take people down. What, uh, what class are you? Oh, my God. What, people what talking now. One second. Let me see if I can get out of this party. I guess I guess I got away from them enough to do it. All right, let's so, so let's start on the social menu. Squad, the people that you're with, that you're doing damage with, that you're you're fighting with, uh, people that you're doing assault with, people that are in your squad, whatever they do, as far as capturing points, you gain experience for. So you want to pick your squads wisely. It's usually best to play with friends. I've got some friends that I play with, so we do actually have quite a few that. We do. We're just not in it at the moment, and then them are on. Outfit. This is like the guild of this game. I haven't seen that it has any function other than putting a tag on your name and saying that you're part of a guild. So, you know, that. Friends. Friends list. Basic. Voice chat. You can have voice chat, join groups, listen to people, turn people up and down. You know, fairly simple stuff. Notifications if anything's happening at the time, if you have any pending request. Video. Really cool feature. I haven't got to try it yet, but you can post videos, log in through your YouTube, log in to Twitch, make a video, have it rendering, have it recording, and do it straight from game. How it works, I haven't tried it yet. I don't want to try it until I have some time to mess around with it, but it's pretty cool that they've added this feature. They understand that a lot of people want to show these badass kill streaks that they get, or a huge assault that they're doing. So it, it's nice that they they know that this is something that people yes, are going to want to do, so that they are putting in it to begin with. This is your vehicle page. Change notifications. Um, do the certifications. Get new stuff for it. Basic. Hey, you your weapons page. Um, pick a loadout edit your weaponry and making sure you've got everything up to map. Here's the map. Now when I said this was a big game, I meant it was a big fucking game. You get a certain amount of resources every so often, depending on what areas you are in control of at the moment. Um, blue is me, so at the moment we're really bad on this continent. We've only got a small quarter of this continent. But you can see that up top, all these continents are different colors, because usually how it goes is at one time, one person is controlling a continent. Not maybe entirely, but they're the majority leader in, the, in, the, in that place. Um, so what happens is you take over certain things, and the more stuff you have, the more resources you gain, and the more your stuff fills up, and you know the more you have for later. Nothing in that resources is too big, other than if you like using vehicles a lot or want to spawn in a lot of 
um, maxes, but it's nice to have and it's nice to control it in the facility of the game. So you can see that there are all these little hexagonal areas that you can go into and um, control or, or contest, and you see that hot spots in the game are all like with little bursts. And you can see who's in control, or who's in control of that area, and what's going on. Like this is a heavy attack that's red, a lighter attack, a heavier attack. And you can see whose influence is bigger, where, or how much influence another army has there, so that you can see where you need to go and what you need to do to um, take care of that. The thing I have wrong with this game, as far as it's supposed to be a lot of strategy, it's supposed to be a lot of tactical warfare. You can only contest things that you are adjacent to. So this right here, I can contest. This right here, I can contest. This over here, where I'm nowhere near, but maybe no one else is, I can't contest. So I, I have a problem with that. Like, I would like to be able to infiltrate and go behind any lines and be right back. Oh, not a problem with that. Um, so that I can, like kind of spread or, or, or cause chaos to cause people coming from the front line to go back and maybe, like, try and get more of the control in that area that I have tried to solo take. And even if I don't succeed, I don't plan on succeeding. It's, it's the point of drawing people away from a, a central location, a diversionary tactic. And like I said, there's three continents. Like, see, you can see this one is red for a reason, because, like, they're owning this one, and this one is blue, because... I don't know why this one's blue. It says that we're in control of it, but we're obviously not. Red is just dominating at the moment. We just took that over. You see, is it? it's, it's real-time. Whenever we take something over, it spreads. So the more facilities we take over, the more resources we get. And the more influence we have on that continent. There's three continents at all at the moment. And you can switch between them at any time. So it's cool. I like that. And the deploy feature is really cool for like, like see I'm at the start point, the warp gate. I can spawn into the action right off the bat. There is a 16 minute cooldown on it. And you can do the same with whatever squadron. Like, if a squad is in a specific area and you want to get to them, you can teleport to the squad leader through instant action, which is really cool. Like I said, I like it. It is a very cool concept. It is a very good way to get in the action, on the action, as soon as it happens. Um, but like I said, I, I would kind of like that tactical aspect, which may be fixed later on. But it's not a, it's not a huge thing. I, I, I really like most of what this game has to offer. Um, as you can see, you can see that there's warp gates, there's stations, there's bio labs, and each of them have a different terrain to them, a different structure, everything. Let's start with warp gates. Warp gates, there are three warp gates on every map. There is the blue, the red, and the purple. You can control everything on this map but a warp gate. A warp gate can never be taken over. It can be contested, it can be fought on, it can be held back, but it can, can never can be captured outfit, by anything BS. other than the race that it is. So, oh, and by the way, the third people are the Van New Sovereignty. I just saw that. Um, so, this, this little hexagonal up here can never be taken. This right here can never be taken. This right here can never be taken. We can take everything around it. We can block their way of getting out for days, but we can't take it. It is a spawn point. It is not a safe haven, but it is the closest thing to a safe haven in this game. It is a big domed area that you can't enter. Things can go out, but you can't enter. But everything else can be contested. A biodome is one of the hardest to contest, in my opinion. It is a big pedestal biodome. It's where people live, it's it's where colonies people are, um, you don't, there's no other people other than people fighting on this game, but that's basically what it consists of. It's just a big living environment on a pedestal covered by a dome. So you basically have to fly in, teleport in, pair, or jetpack in, or jump pad it. There's no way of just ground assault in. It's very hard to contest because it's so hard to get up there and, and contain the control once they bunker down in that kind of turtle shell. 
is what I would think of it as, is a big turtle shell. Not the hard, it's not extremely hard, but it's, it's in my opinion, it's one of the harder structures. And then there's tech plants where it's just big tech all over the place. They have usually a couple of spots where they can um, spawn vehicles. The big place at the, at the center where you have to contest and take over is a vehicle depot. It has a lot of turns around it. Um, and then amp station. I haven't been to an amp station in a while. I can't remember the the, the facility structure of it, but yeah, I, I don't remember it being too hard. But yeah, and then every continent is is different. Like this one is very, um, I think, very wildlife. This one, or this one's the wildlife. This one's kind of deserty, if I remember right. And this one is ice. So whatever you feel like doing that day, I guess you can go and do. But it's, like I said, overall, it's really, really good. I, I like the way the maps are set up. I like the consistency, and I like that there's no load screen other than going to a different continent. And you can have as many people as you want on a continent at a time. Um, and as you can see, this is statistical side, your resources, your filters, your instant action points that you can go into, and then world population. Now, the world population is a neat feature. Depending on how much percentage of people are on, you can either gain or lose bonuses. What I mean by that is, right now, I think they get a very, very minor bonus, but I believe the Venu Sovereignty gets a minor bonus because they are the lowest population on the server. And that's at that time. That You can see it's fluctuating that right now as we speak because people come and go at, as we talk. They just log in, log out. So the more people that can do it, the more people that it'll broadcast and it'll adjust the percentages as it needs to. So say one day we come on and there's 80% um, Terran, 20, or sorry, 15% Vanu, and then five, um, new conglomerate. The new conglomerate's going to get a huge boost. They're going to get an XP boost, they're going to get a population bonus, they're going to get all kinds of things that adjust them so they're not, you know, just being run over for no reason. Um, as you can see on the map, you can see these places popping up that are a darker hue than the normal. Dark hues are places that are absolutely surrounded. They're sort of in control, but they're not. They yet have any. They don't have any real. Um, they don't gain any resources from it. They don't gain anything from it other than that they can, I think, spawn, and that's it. So, technically, they're in there but they're not at the same time. So anytime a, a facility or a piece of land is engulfed between either two or one sovereignty, it becomes a dark, and you can go back and gain it later. Like right there, I don't think there's even a depot. There might be, oh, there's a checkpoint. It's a very small, minuscule base that they can go in and take over a couple seconds. They're not worried about it because they want the big facilities first, but they can. So that's what that is. Um, other than that, I think we pretty much went over everything. I'm not going to do any real big assault or anything at the moment. I'm going to wait till later when I have my friends on and we do it all together. And it's, it's a nice um, structured event. So that's what I plan on doing. I plan on doing it from my channel because Kuza is going to be casting tonight, and since I don't know what time he's going to be casting or when he's going to be casting, I will just let him go as he is and just do it online. The only reason I'm doing it this morning is because I knew he wouldn't be on, so I took the privilege of just casting. So, if you want to see more, if you want to watch a little bit of action tonight, please join us at Twitch Tut twitch.tv slash epicfable333 that is my name on twitch this is a a group effort scream the level gaming so if you want to join me on there 
as we'll be doing in about 9 Eastern Standard Time. So, it'll be a nice event. We'll have fun. We'll blow shit up. You can ask as many questions as you like. The guys that I run with are really top-notch. They're real cool guys. Um, one of them actually has a stream himself. But other than that, they're a really high-end guild that runs around and does a lot of things. Not just this. They're in Guild Wars, everything. They're, they're in a, It's a big, expansive guild type thing, not just a game-to-game -game thing. So... That's what we're going to be doing tonight, as such. I know there's only one guy in here at the moment. If he's here, he can ask me any questions he likes. I'll wait a second see if there's any, any questions that want to be brought up. Otherwise, we're going to call it here. We're going to call it good. And this would be the first ever episode of Rin Reviews. And in closing, while we wait on everyone, my feelings on the game are, I like it. It is a new concept, not the newest concept, but a new one compared to what we've been getting lately. More WoW clones, or more things trying not to be WoW, but ending up to be more like WoW than ever. Um, it's different. It's free. I mean, what, what do you got to lose? Well, all you got to do is download it, and then if you don't like it, take it off. I mean, you, don't, you really don't lose anything. The game is really good. I, I, I like it. It is very well made. It is very well structured. I think it's very balanced. Um, it does have its, its downsides, um, but it did just start. The graphics on it are pretty good. It's very, very, very PC heavy because you're dealing with thousands of people sometimes in one area, and they're all shooting, and they're all having explosions, and they all have their own avatars, so it's kind of hectic. There's no real customization between mini avatars. There's, like... You can choose between four faces, and it's basically a race thing. You can either be white, black, Chinese, or Hispanic. Congratulations, you didn't make it diverse at all. <laughs> you just chose the four races and threw them in there. Um, you can do some kind of armor upgrades or, and that change the way you look, and some, some armor decals and stuff to, to tweak yourself a little bit. But in a firefight... Most of it won't be noticed. It'll be shooting, you'll be killing, you're not going to worry about what the fuck the other guy has on it. So, it's more of a vanity thing for you. Um, I love the search system, I love the station cast system. It's Station cast is an old thing, but I like how they're in tandem in this one. You can only buy certain things with station cast, and it's not an overpowering type thing. And nothing that you can buy with station cast cannot be bought through certs unless it's cosmetic. Big plus. I worry about that all the time with free-to-play games like this. They try to take advantage, try to like you make it feel like if you buy with money that they'll just overpower you and you can run all over people. Really bad thing that can happen sometimes, but it's not a case in this game. You can buy booths like any other free-to-play, and you can buy premium access. Overall, I would rate this a really good game. It is very well put together. It is fun. It is a good thing to to get on Vint or, or Mumble or whatever the hell you use, find a couple of friends, and just shoot the shit out of things. Get in as soon as you want, as fast as you want, go in as hard, go in as light, go in aerial, go in ground, go in stealth, go in whatever fucking way you want to, and have fun. But, that's going to be it for today. Again, this is... At Steam, you can find it at Steam. You can also find it on Sony, uh, since Sony is the people that sponsor this game. It's called Planet Side 2. Free to play. Don't have to pay anything for it. Um, other than that, we'll see you next time.